cats are known to make great pets. In fact, they're just as popular as dogs. Some say that there are advantages of having cats as pets compared to having dogs. For example, cats are much quieter and they like to bring you gifts. They are also natural insect repellers and they don't need to be walked, well, not as much. Now, to talk to us more about cats, we have with us cat behaviorist and author of the book, Cat Whisperer, Michelle Nigel-Schneider. Good morning and welcome to the program, Michelle. Uh, thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here. And that's a beautiful cat you have there. What's his name? Uh, this is Joker, and he's a Scottish fold, and uh, there's only one breeder here in the Philippines, um, Bonavie Cattery who have these beautiful, these are the most wonderful, sweet cats. I know, and I noticed the ears go this way. It's yeah. very rare that you find a cat with ears like that. Am, oh, I, am I right? Yeah, it's no. just a genetic kind of mishap, and they're just bred to continue with that. So, yeah, Very they're really cute. sweet. Um, but some British short hair mixed in, too. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, Michelle, you have, um, you know, you've come a long way, and you're a cat behaviorist, um, and you're known, you know, pretty much every, all over the world. So what made you, how did you become a cat behaviorist? Oh, gosh, that's such a long story. <laughs> uh, well, my interest in cats started at a very young age. Um, as little, I think I was four years old, we lived on a farm. And my parents would not get me a pet cat. We had every animal, but we had barn cats. So they just pointed to the barn and said, you know, there's all those cats out there, go play with them. And, but they were wild. You know, we had to learn to socialize them. And just fast forward, you know, I just work with, I've worked with a lot of animals, but the cats were, I think from that very young age, not being able to, you know, have one as a pet, I really focused on them. They were like the, Cheshires, you know, to me, right. they're the untouchable cats, um, like the mythological, like the unicorn, you know. So. The unicorn, yeah. right, right. Just the thing that you can't, the rainbow that you can't quite get, you know, so I just really focused on them, and I mean, I do, I love all animals, but cats, I just, I've watched them and spent so much time with them, I just feel like, you know, I can read them, and and it's science-based, too. I mean, it's not, you know, all intuition, and mm -hmm. it's a lot of just experiential work, and knowing in cat psychology and how their brain works too. Yes, so. I know you went to Harvard University and you studied um, animal cognition. Cognition. Yeah. So how was that like? Um, that, yeah, those classes took up my life. <laughs> they were very difficult mm -hmm. um, and I think I was probably the only cat person in, you know, there's not a lot of people who do cat behavior because cats are so difficult, they're mysterious okay. and that's part of the reason that they're such great survivors. They are difficult to figure out out in nature. They're elusive, mm -hmm. you know, and to keep themselves safe. Okay, so. and I know that there are different, um, let's talk about cat myths, oh, you know, because some, you know, there, is there some truth in some of these sayings, that like one most popular that they say, uh, black cats are bad luck? Oh gosh, that's such the opposite. And I actually went to Australia and did a media tour just for that. They're very superstitious there about the black cats. And really, if you, you know, read online, um, black cats in many cultures bring good luck. And the... I think we've misread and things have gotten watered down and twisted, you know, through the hundreds of years. But um, if a cat crosses your path, it actually doesn't bring bad luck. It lets you know that it's warning you. It's trying to keep you safe and say, you know, something bad is going to happen. So it doesn't bring bad luck. It actually is helping you, let it, warning you, basically. Okay, you know, so definitely so. not true. Oh, it's not true at not all. Not true. Okay, and another one is that cats always land on their feet. That's pretty true for the most part. They okay. write it themselves, mm -hmm. um, but you know you don't want to test this and drop a cat. I mean, if they're dropped too high, <laughs> obviously, you know. But yeah, they have that internal mechanism to turn and land on their feet. Great. Yeah. So that one is true. And another one is cats have nine lives. Is there, where did that saying come from? Oh gosh, someone else asked me that. Um, there is a really peculiar little story about that. Um, no one asks me that question anymore, the nine lives, but um, I'm sure if they could have it their way, yes, they would have nine lives, you know, but. Why nine? I don't know where that came from. I really don't know. That's not something in my behavior repertoire we talk about very much. You know, most okay. of the cats we work with, they have a lot of behavior issues, mm -hmm. and that's why so many are sent to the shelter and abandoned outside. It's because of their, really it's just their natural, instinctual behaviors that the owners don't understand. So the cat actually is the most misunderstood companion animal, and, um, 
and why so many are euthanized each mm -hmm. year. They're the most euthanized, abandoned companion animal because they're so misunderstood. You know, a lot of people think that they should behave like dogs and obey like dogs, but if anything, the cats, uh, we make them more analogous to a squirrel or a raccoon. They're more, a little bit more wild, and they want to do what's in it for them. You know, they're not going to obey like a dog would. Okay. So. Let's talk, since you mentioned dogs, you know, what are, do you spot some personality differences between dog owners and oh. cat owners? <laughs> oh gosh, do I even want to go there? Um, yes, you do. <laughs> I have dogs and cats. I have horses. I love them. I love all animals. Um, there is this culture of, you know, there's dog people and there's cat people. I actually... Uh, think that's kind of strange to only like one type of animal, you know? I think if you're a good person, you have a good heart, you love all animals. Um, th but I will say, as far as the dogs go, the dogs are very, um, you know, immediate gratification. So for maybe someone who, I hate to say this, but <laughs> for someone who's maybe wants to control or, you know, immediate gratification, a dog would be a perfect pet. You know, they're very easy, they're easier to figure out. The cats, I found that my clients, um, especially my client clients with 15 to 20 cats, they're more of the intellectuals. So an animal to figure out, um, if you can accept a cat, and let them be who they are, I think you're a much more open person. You know, you kind of go with the flow, whereas mm -hmm. dog owners might be a little bit more rigid. I hate to say that, but no, it's fine. Um, it's fine. I, it's fine. on the other hand, I like both, you know, right. I'm both. And I, yeah. I like, I think that I've always wanted to shake up that culture, but you don't have to be a dog person or a cat person. You know, mm -hmm. you can definitely be both. So. Yeah, but there are personalities in a person or a character in a person that makes you more of a cat uh, lover or someone who'd be, who'd rather or be better off with a cat than a dog or vice versa. Yeah, maybe someone who is a little bit more um, rigid and not as open, you know, a dog might be something that they can figure out. Again, the cats, you know, they're mysterious and, um, you know, if you can't figure something out, you, don't, you can't handle that, then of course I say, well, you probably should have a dog. But, um, uh, yeah, my clients who have cats, I mean, most of them also, they also have dogs too. Right. And then when it's the other way around, just dogs, you know, we don't see a lot of dog owners have cats. Mm -hmm. And yeah. dogs and cats can definitely live together in peace. Oh, definitely. No oh, definitely. In yeah. fact, cats and dogs, um, they can get along a lot better than cats together. So, so yeah. So we always say, you know, if you have a cat, um, there is something to be said for adding a con specific, which is a different species into the household that adds environmental enrichment for them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but adding cats, you know, I always tell everyone, it, a lone cat is a sad thing. We definitely want to have, you know, at least two cats. I would have two cats or multiple cats, so. Because <laughs> they're, they're, not, they're not hard to take care of. They're low maintenance. Right? Oh, definitely. Right. I mean, compared to a dog, having to let a dog out several times a day oh, yes. with a cat, you know, they're litter box trained. Um, right. But they're social creatures. You know, it's a misconception that they're solitary, mm -hmm. where they want to be alone. They have a big social repertoire. They groom each other. They rub up against each other. Um, <laughs> and they're solitary hunters. That's really where that little really myth is. comes into. They like to hunt by themselves. Like dogs will hunt in packs. You know, but dog, or cats definitely are the lone hunter. Okay, some common, common questions that cat owners might want to know, or they probably already know, can cats be trained? Oh gosh, yeah. It's, learn, it's just a form of learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, a goldfish, if you, you know, walk to the aquarium with uh, some uh, fish food, you know, they learn that, oh, I'm going to get fed and then go to the top. Same with cats. You know, you can shape, all my cats, I've shaped their behavior to do high five with operant conditioning, oh, which is clicker it. training. That's great. So, yeah, it's just a form of learning. I mean, mm -hmm. we learn, too. We know if we go to work, we're going to get paid. <laughs> so we do it every day. So anyone can learn. <laughs> anyone with a brain can learn. Exactly. So how do you get cats to stop scratching furniture? So, yeah, we're big on anti-declaw, and there's a great movie called The Paw Project um, by Dr. Jenny Conrad that really explains, you know, the cruelty behind that. Um, it's a natural behavior. It's a way that cats mark territory, um, and it de-stresses them. It also, of course, takes care of their claws. Mm -hmm. um, we want to promote the behavior where we want it, so we'll put cat scratchers in different areas to promote the clawing behavior where we want it. And then if your cat is claw marking somewhere, we'll use a lot of... Uh, items at the pet store, like double-sided sticky tape, or there's a product called Sticky Paws that's really popular. Um, just gives the cat a negative outcome mm -hmm. for the exact behavior. A lot of people think, oh, we need to reprimand our cat or punish the cat. 
they're never going to learn that way. They're okay. going to end up not liking you, okay. and you definitely want to just let them learn that it's the actual behavior of clawing on your couch that, you know, gives a negative outcome. Don't for mess them. with a cat. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, but just kidding. So, Michelle, you have a, the Cat Whisperer book, um, which is out. And um, tell us more about the book and what can you find in here and maybe the best advice that you can give to cat owners who are watching right now. Yeah, um, so the Cat Whisperer book, um, there's a little bit of a memoir in there. Um, there's some interesting, uh, a subject called mind throwing that anthropologists now believe that we're um, some anthropologists now believe that we're genetically inclined to read animals well because we've been living with them for, you know, since the beginning of when man and animal were together. Mm -hmm. So essentially, the book, I've tried to help my clients um, or, you know, whoever wants to buy the book become cat whispers. So several chapters of all the um, common behavior issues that end up, you know, cats in the shelter, millions euthanized every year. And Really, it's about helping people understand the very misunderstood cat and that their behaviors are natural. And if you look at the wild cats, you know, the African servals, the tigers, you know, those animals are revered. And, you know, more of their behaviors are more accepted. But if, you know, we understand that our little domestic cats, you know, that's where their uh, behaviors come from that we deem, you know, unwanted or bad, you know, I think we can better accept and better understand our cats and save their lives. You know, is just he trying happen. to say something? or is, what He wants his daddy over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute. Well, thanks again, Michelle, for coming to the program and telling yeah. us all about this. Um, and this is her book, uh, uh, The Cat Whisperer. And thanks again so much for coming to the show. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks. That was Michelle Neagle Schneider, also known as The Cat Whisperer. Michelle is here in the Philippines for the Resorts World Manila 2000. 14 epic summer events. Now for events and schedules, visit their website at www.rwmanila.com or you can call them at 908-8833. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, thank you.